Gentleman yields to Mr. Arrington. Um, I thank the gentleman from Florida. Um, just to respond to my friend from Oregon, and I know he has uh, the best of intentions uh, with respect to the transition from conventional fuels to renewable fuels. I would, uh, I'd put my district up against uh, any district in the country in terms of renewable energy. Mr. Chairman, we, we generate more wind energy in my district in West Texas than the entire state of California three times over. There isn't a single district in the nation that does more wind renewable. And I bet you will be the number one in solar before long. And you know what? It's built not only right here on the largest cotton patch in the world, but the largest oil patch in the world. See, we used to say we were the Saudi Arabia of, uh, of Texas and the United States. Now Saudi Arabia says they're the West Texas of the Middle East. It, it, we've seen this, this shift uh, and it's been a gift. It has been a gift to our country and to the world because it's allowed America to be the leaders. China is on our heels. I mean, breathing down our necks. They've got a bigger military. Their economy's growing uh, over the last, if you measure the last decade or two, faster than our economy. And uh, they don't have the values we have. I think we can all agree with that. This is one of the big ones when we talk about um, losing the global competition and leadership to more sinister regimes like the communist Chinese um, and their leadership, if not the people, it's certainly the communist Chinese leaders who do not appreciate our God-given rights that, as George W. Bush used to say, aren't America's gifts to the world. It's God's gift to all mankind. We believe that. They don't. <laughs> and this, um, this notion, and again, I want to address my colleague from Oregon, that we need to lift up and accelerate the growth of renewable at the expense or while we tear down oil and gas is wrongheaded. It is wrongheaded. We can be all the above. I'm all the above. Let's accelerate technology. Let's, let's accelerate the advent of sustainable renewable energy, but we have the only reliable source of fuel today is fossil fuels. And we need it to protect our country, protect our interests, our allies, and to continue to thrive with quality life that we've come accustomed to as the envy of the world. So um, we, you said that there's a loss of competition with coal. I'll tell you why we lose the competition, because we're naive. And we, we compete against state-owned, if not state-subsidized, state-owned enterprises. We just can't compete with China owned enterprises or Mexican owned enterprises. And, and, and there's only so many reserves of fossil fuels uh, around the world to tax them again in a way that is inappropriate and not relevant to guilty is, is, is a major step back, a retreat. And it's a big problem. I'm not going to tell you it's going to destroy the oil and gas industry, 1.7 million jobs. I'm not going to do that, but it's going to be a big hit to them, a big hit and uh, not good for America. So I appreciate your views, but I think you're wrong. And I think we can do all the above without picking winners and losers. And uh, when we do, the biggest loser is going to be the U.S. of A. And that's my strong view. And I hope uh, my colleagues can support my amendment. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. The gen